All right, moving on then to Finance Advisory Council. Well, we have a choice here. We have two, we have to talk about the audit and then we have to talk about uh, something that I assume is gonna go into a lengthy discussion regarding extracurriculars. So, um, Art, if you wouldn't mind, I'd ask that you take a seat for a few minutes and let us just address this audit so that. That's fine, I'd like to go downstairs and check real yeah, quick. Yeah, that's fine, <laughs> and you can come back up and. Um, Dr. Stinkis, yes. is there a way that, could we discuss the audit afterwards where staff doesn't have to hang out? Uh, it's it's part of the Committee of the Whole Agenda. Can we? Can yeah, Art can stay. I just, I have, I have a feeling that this one's going to draw, uh, the extracurriculars is going to be somewhat a lengthy discussion, so you might miss, you might miss the basketball. <laughs> well, yeah, no. You, it's just you a have people year. assigned, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, can we, like, switch it so we can get staff out and then sure. do lengthy discussions at? Sure, I think, um, so what we had provided, we met with the Finance Council on Friday, and the sheets you got in your packet, uh, the top spreadsheet for athletics that says athletic budget 2012-2013. This is our current budget. Uh, we added a few cells to the right. The pay to participate there. We added gate receipts because this is something that we're looking at in regards to those activity passes. Something new that was added on uh, was rentals. Now, the rentals go back to the, the district's general ed fund as a revenue but we just kind of wanted to show what areas draw um, and, and the prices that we're collecting from people renting those facilities and now paying the fees. I mean, so rental on football is the football field rental. Right? Correct. But it's got correct. nothing to do with the football team. program. Correct. Well, right, those two, that that amount is strictly like Westchester Raiders and St. Mary's. I understand that, but I don't get the connection. So we rent a football field, how it possibly affects the cost of football. Well, what we did, what I what I tried to put on there is our, what we consider somewhat of a feeder program. That if we didn't have a program, they might not come to RB to do it. So like Otters, or um, age group gymnastics, or the Junior Bulldog Wrestlers. So that's why we just, just to look, I mean, like Dr. Skinka said, it goes into a general account right now, okay. but just to see what maybe our teams brought in because of these feeder <coughs> teams. The second page is our conference. This is the Metro Suburban Conference. And Marianne, you have those documents, right? For the overhead, so anybody in the audience or on camera, the TV can see it. The next spreadsheet is, these are the, the, the top set of sports or the sports offered by the Metro Suburban Conference. This is the conference we are in. And then the sports <coughs> below are the same schools and what non-conference sports they offer. We have the total number of coaches under the, the non under the conference sports, and then at the bottom, we provided a total number of coaches for the number of sports offered. And what we wanted to do with that was to give you an idea of uh, where we are with coach kind of coach per sport. Um, the next page. These are the ten schools or ten schools that I refer to, and I will show you a, a report um, later today in closed session, but this is a schools that have a similar free and reduced lunch population, 12 to 1,800 students. Um, these are schools that we would compete against in the IHSA class that we are in, and we listed it kind of by the same thing. We offset the blue line to show what their conference sports are and then what their non-conference sports are, which ones they offer, don't offer, number of coaches per sport, etc., so that you have an idea. The reason we wanted to show this a little bit is last year we did not eliminate any sports but we significantly reduced the number of stipends we have for coaching positions. The third chart that was provided is schools 12 to 1850 or 12 to 1800 and the number of sports they offer and where RB fits in in the state. And then on the bottom, we just showed the conference again so you can have a disclaimer based on population, how many sports they're offering in the Metro Suburban. Glen Bard and Fenton are in the, uh, the general chart and they're highlighted. But this just gives you an idea of the number of sports offered by schools of similar size. Good. Good so th this is some preliminary data that we wanted to get in your hands. Art's gonna give you um, a, a, a first draft proposed recommendation. Now what I wanna do to preface that is, 
Um, I know we received one question from a board member if we could break it down by participant and that cost arts working on something like that I don't know if you have a draft of that uh, yeah but it, it'll be more up to date after next week because we'll get our spring numbers and can give a true number so I didn't want to Totally bring that. I mean, I okay. have some information. We're not going to remake the wheel, right? You presented that last year, right? So he's just yeah, it's very, the number. Yeah, yeah, it's very similar. Okay. So we just need right. to look because some of our sports have changed number-wise. So we just got to update those numbers. Now remember, we're not going to vote on the elimination uh, or pay fees related to athletics. Now we on the budget timeline we had that slated for April. Uh, so we have some time to talk about this, but I wanted to get this in your hands now because this will pay play a part in that. When the board originally uh, directed me to look at balancing the budget or cutting the deficit for next year, um, the parameters that we put in place were that we should align it to the budget makeup. So, um, you know, for example, 80% of the budget makeup is salary and benefits, so that 80% of the reductions or close to 80% of the reductions should be in the area of salary and benefits. So, in regards to Athletics and extracurriculars, that's about 6% of the budget. Um, for athletics, it's about 80000 Right, Tim? That's what we worked on mm -hmm. again today just to make sure our numbers were correct. Out of a $22 million, roughly a $22 million budget, 22.8, we're at um, about 80000 in uh, from athletics. For us to get $80,000, we will have to uh, eliminate some sports if that's what the board wants us to do. Um, you know, I, I know we're, we're, we're about protecting opportunities for kids, and um, we, we all recognize the importance of both, you know, the curricular programs we offer as well as the extracurricular, um, but ART's gonna present the first draft recommendation. The other thing that we have to really watch with this is our Title IX. So as Art put this together, we had to send a couple drafts to our legal counsel, and, and, and Todd looked at those to make sure we we're in Title IX compliance. Um, because it's not by the number of sports offered, it's by the number of participation opportunities offered, and how that aligns with your, participa uh, your uh, enrollment breakdown for male and female athletes. So um, Art, you can cover that when you go through your, the, the first draft of what your recommendation is. There's two ways, right? There's expense reduction or you can go revenue enhancement. Right, so we kind of put together it's kind of a, comp a little bit of both. So if we don't want to cut, we'd have to generate significant significant amount of revenue right. to it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Two, two sheets. One is the memo, um, and the, the second sheet is, is just an updated um, budget sheet with... Uh, numbers if we did these reductions of where the savings would actually come from. Congratulations on the basketball. Oh yes, good one. Mm -hmm. Yes, the basketball. Now Art, I should have I should have told you to pass out one at a time because this group you're gonna have some looking at the spreadsheet, some looking mm. at the memo and you're gonna get hit from two different So just to recap, we we put up play to participate in last year and we generated how much? Um, after the spring numbers, we should be at right around sixty-six thousand. Okay, and we need to generate eighty thousand. Eighty thousand dollars would re re represent a cut to athletics. Now, there's not enough or or increase increase that to offset. And this year, with the pay-to-play, it's only sixty-five thousand that we generate. Yes. Okay. So, our, let's start with the memo before they go into. Yeah, because the, the budget sheet really only shows just where the money is actually coming from. Um, so with the memo, to go off of what Dr. Skika said, is uh, the challenging thing for us was to get to that number um, and looking at where we made the cuts last year with all of our stipends, we're really, to continue to run our programs at a high level, we felt we cannot continue to reduce the number of stipends, coaching positions. So then we had to look at where we can possibly make some cuts to have the least amount of impact on our students. Um, so the proposal at this point, the recommendation of the sports to cut would be boys and girls water polo, boys volleyball, and girls golf. Um, kind of one off of those sheets that, we, that, that Dr. Skink has talked about, looking at what other schools offer, what our conference offers, where do we fall 
you know, we're on, yes, we offer 26 sports at this time, which was a, you know, there's only 10 schools out of those 79 schools that offer that much. All right, so we do, we want to offer everything. You know, as an AD, I want to offer everything. But to get to that number, you know, we picked these sports. Um, why did we pick these sports? Like I said, the number of total participants is the lowest in those sports. They're all non-conference sports. Um, Title IX was definitely an impact. You know, boys and girls water polo, it's the same amount that is 19 and 20. Um, girls golf is our lowest number of participants um, historically over the last couple of years. Um, and then you had to throw in another uh, male sport. So boys volleyball was put in, once again, a non-conference sport, last sport added, gets us our numbers to, to be completely the same when it comes to participation opportunities based on student population. Um, that's on the second page. You can see I kind of broke it down. And I, and I didn't read this per word, but went over it. Um, you know, our student population this year is 1454. Female population is 675, 46%. Male population is 54%. With making those cuts and eliminating those participation opportunities, we would have a total of 1,041 opportunities, sport opportunities, which would 46 would go to female, 56 would go to male. So we are in compliance with Title IX while doing that. When you start looking at some of the other sports that, well, why not this, why not this? Well, there's always a ripple. You know, let's just say, why not badminton? Well, badminton has 40 girls that participate. Well, if you do that, then you gotta do a male sport that has probably 60 to make it equal. So that was our challenge of, if we're gonna have to make cuts, we have to get to 80 or $100,000, how do we do that? So those were the sports based on all the things we went through. The, we looked at all the non-conference sports first. So the conference sports, we would not only impact RB and impact the quality of our programs, but we'd be impacting all the schools that we play. Because the majority of your conference schedule, or the majority of your schedule is set by your conference. If we started eliminating sports or levels that our conference offered, it would make it very challenging for all those other schools too. And I think as a, one of the highest members of our conference and our role in our conference is that we, did, we wouldn't want to do that to them also. And I know it, it's been a concern. Pam has met with the principals and, and that was their question to us. Or are you going to cut anything that's offered as a conference? Um, I know before we've talked about levels. So I looked at, well, what if we eliminated boys and girls freshman B basketball? There's such little cost involved with those levels that we run because there's no big cost added per se. There's not an extra coach. The transportation, our teams are going there regardless. The only cost that you have is the officials for a second game at a reduced rate and to pay our workers, if we're hosting, to pay our workers an additional $20. So if we cut eliminated boys and girls freshman B basketball, it would save us $1,500. It, it doesn't, doesn't do any, I mean, I think it actually has a worse, you know, the kids that participate in that, now we, We've gone against what we want to do and give them an opportunity to save just fifteen hundred dollars. So I didn't. That's why we kind of went away from that. Um, so we, we looked at these numbers. The other thing we looked at. So we that got us to roughly um, seventy six thousand dollars that we would cut just in the the athletic side. Um, after living this year, I would recommend, based upon what we went through, to reinstate our assistant cross country coaches both boys and girls due to you know we did have to bring back some coaches for super it's supervision and it's you know it's the everyday practice it's you can't just bring one person to a meet to help you really need them here with our numbers so we either make it a cut sport which i don't think we want to do because it's one of those sports where we could allow a lot of kids to participate and the higher we get we obviously need somebody else so i put those two coaches back in so roughly the savings would be 65640 for making the cuts. Our other re recommendation at this point would be to raise pay to play to 100, or pay to participate to 150 per sport, and then to also raise football to 175, being that it is by far our most expensive sport to run, so that would help offset those costs. In doing that, we'd raise an additional um, 57,000 in revenue, so the total with cuts and revenue would be 122,919. You know, some of the pay to participate numbers off are, I'm using last year's numbers, 
you know, but I think we would be within, you know, a thousand dollars to give or take on both ends. Um, so. What do you mean by a thousand dollars, give or take on both ends? I mean, it, it could be fifty-six thousand. It could be fifty-eight. Oh, I mean, I'm it's sorry. Hard I thought tell. you meant the hundred and fifty no. <laughs> was a thousand dollars, give or take. Um, okay. Hey, Art. One of the items you have in here is is gate receipts, and I know there was a contentious thing with the, the boosters are you plan have you been in conversations with them about uh, next year and yeah we've talked already and and uh, just I think everybody knows there has to be there they're gonna restructure it some way shape or form because you know we do show the revenue that we bring in and we will do a presentation I, I don't know if it's in April, April or May April. of a report that I I, I sent out a report to every AD and asked each school, what do you do, what do you do, how is this, and just to get a comparison so we can see what other schools do. Um, and, you know, w we can go in depth on that. But I have talked to boosters already that, you know, we really have to look at how we're doing things and, and possibly restructure it. And the goal is not to hurt the boosters. We're going to work with them to try to come up with a win-win solution. Right. For no, both groups. Yeah. I mean, they've uh, they've provided us with a lot of things early this year and continue. You know, we're bringing back the booster golf outing, which is a big fundraiser for athletics. And so, you know, and the other thing too is, um, you know, our supply budget, which I didn't talk about, I cut again by thirty percent. So that's two years we've cut by sixty percent. I'm going to have to rely on boosters for a lot of things, which you already have this year, but. Um, and we're going to need some of the gate receipts to offset some of that supply money. That's what yeah. we talked about. Mm -hmm. So that was the other piece. I, I'm sorry I left out. The, we reduced the supplies again by 30%. Overall, some teams took a bigger hit. Um, some teams did not. Like football, we took, I probably took 45% cut um, just because they're so high. Um, there's a way we could get down. But, I mean, most of our sports are at $500, which gets you just the bare minimum every year and, you know, can you comment on the paragraph that's above the numbers? Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the other thing that, you know, if we choose to go this route, um, one thing, and the other reason why we chose these sports is traditionally water polo is offered as a club by somebody somewhere. Um, and I think that we would reach out to them and say, we have a venue, we have the space, we have kids that are interested, you know, help us get something started and it wouldn't be funded by rb but it could be funded by this outside group as a club sport the same in boy volleyball volleyball is a big club sport um so we would look at those ways to hopefully provide an opportunity for our kids in those club sports at least. so we would be uh, free to draft fenwick uh, boys to our water polo absolutely team. um the other thing which i didn't mention that i wrote in there the girls golfers could have the opportunity to participate with the boys um, they are allowed to do, they could, if it was a no-cut sport, which we don't have, they could come out every day. They would have to compete and make it into the top 14 or top 8 on varsity, 7 on, on JV. If they did, they can compete. They could compete at any boys' event up until the state series. Then they could enroll, then they could register as a female in there. So some of the schools in our conference do that right now where they'll have one or two female golfers that go and play with the boys all year and then they just go to the state series. So. We've eliminated, but still given them the opportunity if they choose to come out, they, they could come out. Uh, I have a, a couple of questions. Um, you, t you mentioned that you were talking to some of your cohorts in conference, um, other ADs. Um, are any of the other conference members also considering cuts to programs as well? They've actually had it already. They already did. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, Elmwood Park had it, and now they're going to reinstate a lot of things that they just mm -hmm. cut, a lot of the lower level things, like the freshman A and B and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, Glenbard went through it, I think, about three or four years ago, where they did almost what we're proposing. They, they raised pay to par participate mm -hmm. to cover the cost. They originally had, I think, maybe four or five schools or four or five sports slated to get eliminated, but they found a way through pay to, pay to participate to bring those back. So a lot of the schools have already gone through it and we're mm. kind of the last one you to... You also answered my second question, so thank you. Oh, Any other questions for her? Yeah, well, for Kevin and our... Kevin, did you say that your number is 80,000 total net change? That's 5% oh, yes. reductions just from athletics. Now the problem mm -hmm. is um, we need to probably come up with an additional, f uh, what do we say, 16 to 20 
from non athletics but there's not much left to cut from there because we cut a lot of those clubs last year so that's why we were trying to get it as much through athletics and pay to participate and Pam's going to talk a little bit about non-competitive clubs next but if you uh, did the the dollars we did and we took five uh, percent from the 20 million what is it Tim 22 million or is it what, what number were we using the today? expenditures are 20 20.8 20. 20. 20. so why did we why are we recommending raising the pay to participate and cutting at 50 percent more than what you your target was for sports the, is the proposal is a reduction of 123,000 which is 43,000 more than 80. We wanted to provide some alternatives to the board as we carry out this discussion in the next couple months. Okay. This is how it's going to have to, you know, if we want to go by reductions and eliminations, this is where we would have to reduce from. If we just want to get to the 80, um, maybe we can look at pay to participate. Maybe you can look at raising pay to participate across the board to save some of those sports. I, we wanted to kind of have the board make that decision. I mean, so we got we went up to seven what seventy five this year for paid. Yeah, we it would want be to double it, hundred percent. It'd be hundred percent correct. An infinite increase this year and a hundred percent increase next year is what the board, the administration is recommending. So Our somebody who played cut more. a football player who plays two other sports would have to pay four hundred and seventy five dollars to play three sports. So. Yeah. It this is. There, this, there's no easy way, and I think the board knows. I've been talking to some of the board members individually. We talked about it at finance. Um, you know, the administration recognizes the importance of extracurriculars, uh, but we also recognize that our first need is to be here academically. So there's only so much uh, that we can cut. The, the the choice would be is if we want to have these things, people are going to have to pay right now, and if not, we we don't fund them at all. And you know, but he also doesn't appear we accounted the estimated and we know don't know what's going to be next year the twenty three thousand dollar gate receipts in here either right right we don't we right that's not included but i mean but right so now it's not in, in our if budget we, just for the fun of the discussion here if we threw in twenty three thousand dollars in gate receipts it's sixty what's that in the beta participation if you throw it all in we instead of eighty thousand we're at a hundred and forty five or something thousand that you're targeting here but you could then play around with the pay to participate maybe take it down a little bit and now well, let I'm me ask you a question though your 30 percent supply re reduction is that reasonable because you took the reduction supplies down last year too and well, there's certain stuff that you ain't going to be able to get away with, you know right and i think that's where we hit is that it's you really have to look at and take better care of the equipment and make sure that it lasts longer and go to the boosters for some of those things that um like winter warm-ups for baseball we just bought i mean we had jackets we had you know you have to upkeep those jackets to make it, things like that are not going to be what you we would normally get you know the the baseball account would basically cover baseballs i mean and that's Yes, where this I think this is reasonable, but that that that's where it's a, going to be a challenge. And, and I, 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 I don't want to pit one side over the other, but I'm going to do it here. How much did the athletic department get cut last year? It wasn't really cut; it was to pay to participate last no, year. No, we cut. We cut. That's right. We did cut the stipend. We cut 162,000. 162 plus to pay to participate. And then, and how much did we cut in the activity clubs last year? 127,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and just to put it in perspective, I, I've been doing numbers on how many sections academically. I know that's a different discussion, but the academic program took right, a plus significant the, hit. So if we know, look here and, uh, and possibly yeah. the, the athletic department takes it, there may be opportunities in the activity side, the, the, the math clubs of the world. Gonna, and, and yeah, we got a plan that once I think we're done asking some initial questions for art and let you digest this till the next meeting or till the next committee to hold. Pam's got a plan on the, on the non-competitive, well, on the non-IHSA clubs to where we might be able to bring some things back, but with a pay-to-participate model. We, we, we took a lot of feedback from parents at patrons and even in some of the budget emails uh, that you, you have access to um, where people are saying, well, why, you know, you did pay to participate for, for athletics. We would have been happy to pay to participate for math club or for the musical or so we, we, we kind of put together a rough draft of a plan of that tonight a little bit too to 
you know, it, listen, this is not, this will be one of the tougher decisions you make this week, and then the, the decision about reducing staff. These, these are not good decisions to be making. Well, Ed, Art, thank you. I think it's a good memo, and I could support the memo 100%. When I talk to uh, parents that are all around, these fees are with, are actually ch even these um, higher fees are cheaper than what people in the office are paying for their kids. People and so in the office. My colleagues, oh. what they pay in their school, these are much cheaper all around. In the north suburbs, west suburbs, these are still very competitive prices for play to pay. So that might help us, you know, if we need to look at what other parents are paying for th these few years that their kids are playing. And as we said, if there is 140,000, maybe you could put back something like the musical because we said last year that the activities took a disproportional hit to sports. And with opening up the opportunity for other organizations to come in to have host club water polo or club volleyball, you still have those opportunities for the students. I um, thank you very much. I think it's. Good. Can you give us that information from last year? I keep, you know, what, what was the budget? What did we cut? And sp you did it once, but I don't remember. I'm I keep hearing to see it if you have. For next time. And Art could get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, again, uh, I think the research that we're going to get again, which is what the pay to participate yeah. is, in our soon to be finalized list of comparison schools, right? We'll see what they do for pay to participate, so right? Good. Yeah, you have that. You can update that from last year too, right? You already had information on what schools were charging what. We had that before, yeah. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can get that. Any other questions for Art? I, I would just counter what Laura said. I, mm -hmm. I uh, think we should look at whether how unproportional it was and whether we can resurrect it. But I have a fundamental problem with having football. Let's raise the football players' fee so we can have an art club. If our, you know, if we're going to do some kind of funding for that the parents are going to pay for, if that's the choice we're making, as opposed to the district paying for it, if people are interested in art, let them pay for art. If people are interested in football, let them pay for football on some pro rata basis think, for that. I think if you just let, when we get to Pam, I think you'll, what you'll see is they, we're not trying to offset. I think we have a, pr a pretty good first draft plan with, with, with uh, the, the non-competitive. The only reason we raised football a little bit more is because, you know, the, the, the repair fee, we have to condition the equipment every year. Required by um, the state. It's re which is required by the state. Um, and you have to watch, I mean, it's just the most expensive sport, yet it's the highly, it's, we have over 100 and something. 121, and a lot of schools do do it that way. We were looking at what other schools do, and they, they have a tier system on their sports. Um, so that was where we kind of got the idea of to help. Right. That's fine. Just to offset it. Well, so if we could see that, that would help. We could, yeah. could have Art pull some of that information. Mm -hmm. Okay, Art. Any other questions for him? Great job on the memo. Great good analysis. Well, I'm Art. thinking we'll bring Art back to the March committee to hold, dig, dig into this a little more and have some more. It gives him enough time to pull. Art, so what we need you to pull is uh, what some other schools are charging. Go off of the same list so it's the same non-conference and conference schools we're comparing to if they're <coughs> charging pay to participate what they're charging mm -hmm. uh, and then if they anybody had any of the tier models that you saw if you can show us examples of that if you can also if, uh, with the pay to participate you're going from 75 to 150 show us incrementally what that means in a 25 dollar increment you know what i mean so if we went to 100 dollars, how much more yeah, we, revenue we, did, we, we did have that yeah. broken out already. okay good yeah. okay all right Art, thank you thank you Art. pam you're up next Okay, I'm going to, um, there is a, a let's memo. Go, let's go through the first, what, what they have in the, okay. in the first memo, what you have is, um, just with a brief introduction, you had this in your board packet. This just shows the second page that has the actual charts. These are the active clubs we're running and how much is costing us in their stipends. Then the, uh, to the right is, those are the reductions. Either they were completely eliminated or the assistants were eliminated. And that was the total savings from last year. And then she has a key on the bottom that talks about if a stipend split or if it's volunteer. And I 
and then uh, Pam has a first draft memo of something we wanted to show you what we were putting together a little bit the last couple of weeks. So like on the FCCLA, it says 3S, that means three, 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 three people, people split, split one, split one, stipend. Split one stipend. Yeah, right. okay, got it. So it's not like we, have, we could cut one of the three people. Exactly, cool. and the only one um, that you can see of an existing active activity that has multiple sponsors that doesn't have a split and us after it is best buddies and that was the one that if you recall from last year we had to bring back um, by the um, national charter of that organization you need to have a regular education and a special education teacher you need both of those positions filled because it, that's exactly what the, the club is about. So that has to have two stipends. We, had, we tried to eliminate one and we, were, um, uh, we needed to bring it back rightfully so because we couldn't continue the club with only one stipend. So the, the next <laughs> chart you have. Is it just one page? It's one yes. page. Yeah. So the way I had Pam it's break this down for me is uh, the way I think about extracurricular in, in regards to clubs. Um, is there service and leadership activities? Those are your class councils and then your students association. Um, it, it, it's more service and leadership activities and those I felt are more the district should provide. We should be growing young leaders in service as a public uh, high school. The number of participants are listed. Now for the, cl uh, the, the class, the classes that looks kind of small where the six and the eight and some of those things, those are just officers. Underneath that are the publications. These are the yearbook and the newspaper. And there's an additional stipend on top of those teachers teach that during the day because there's so much additional time that goes into uh, outside the school day of actually running the publication, the prints, and the <coughs> website, and some of those things. Now this is where we kind of get a new model to where you're, what you were given last year. But the next section of clubs, these are performance and competitive-based clubs. These are clubs that compete, use transportation, and or have a performance and collect gate receipts, um, use of the auditorium. And these are more interest-based, but yet uh, competitive and poor, or performance. So what, we were t what we're debating here, or what we're discussing with the board, is that these performance and interest-based clubs be treated similar to the sports and that we implement a pay to participate and we bring some things back that we eliminated. So you bring back the musical, you, you, you bring back the scholastic, uh, the math team, um, you bring back speech and the, the speech and debate team and you try to offset that or at least offset those costs by having a pay to participate model. Um, the fee structure that we've, I had Pam put together to the right we off our, our register our flat registration fee last year was hundred and ninety dollars for every student a portion of that does go to the general extra curriculars not the sports but the general extracurriculars so we thought by adding ten dollars to that to make it a flat 200 that can offset the service and leadership clubs and some of the costs we're using for those and, and the reason for doing that is um, it's too hard for us and the sponsors to monitor the attendance to those clubs you know Pam was telling me at, at, at any time student association could have 50 kids show up to a meeting if it's homecoming week or if it's a big pep assembly week or and then the next meeting they could have 12 kids there um, so those are kind of a little different to monitor where the chess team is going to have their roster um, the musical you're going to have various roles that you need to fill and kids can be on stage crew kids can be a part of different things um, so we were able to kind of break this down a little bit by if we just went ten dollars on the general registration fee to a flat 200 and then those clubs that um, are competitive or performance based we can go seventy five dollars now this is something we were just talking about today kind of breaking some things out um, but we were talking about if they don't use transportation and they're just held at RV, like the musical, um, orchestras, shenanigans, um, Pam, any other ones I'm missing? Um, twirlers are on there. Um, they just compete at RV, yeah, right? Right. 
they're just they're that would be a seventy five dollar mm -hmm. pay to participate. If their if their activity uh, included transportation where they competed against other schools and had to go to meets, we could go possibly to a hundred dollars for those clubs. And you know we we've met with two parent groups, Pam and I, ones that helped fund the Riverside Guild. Uh, play that was conducted towards the end of first semester as well as the math parents and We've heard from both groups. Those are groups that fundraised on their own to support the clubs that it would have been a lot easier to do a pay to participate model uh, and then we received um, Pam's received several, a lot of feedback from that mm -hmm. and patrons and some of that so if, if you want to go into uh, the volunteers and then your the bottom part of your spreadsheet's where it kind of gets confusing. I'll let you explain yeah. that. Your um, so basically, we were looking at, at um, I, I reduced all of the student participation by the 20% free lunch, taking that number. So when you add up the number of comp um, performance or competitive groups that have entry fees and transportation and, and they compete, the 158 kids get reduced to 127. If you charge them $100 a piece, it comes to the total, you know, the, the 12,700 below. So the same is done with the, the um, competitive performance-based activities that don't go outside of RB, they're just gonna perform here. And so you reduce that by 20% and you get that number. Then we have the two options to look at, re raising registration by $10 or $20. So I gave you an option A for, for figuring out how much you could bring in your revenue or an option B. And so that's to take those, you're obviously gonna take all the kids that are participating and if you like the structure and you can play around with the, the numbers of the structure, but it's taking those kids that you're gonna charge 100, the kids you're gonna charge 75, they're added together and then option A is with the $10 increase to all, all families when they register their, their children per child or the 20. And so option B is to add the 20 to that. And that's how much revenue you would bring in, either 35,000 basically or 46,000. So that is just like athletics is raising this year, 66,000. This is how you could raise some revenue, um, bring back some, some things, not everything. And then you'd want to offset that. For, you offset that against your expenditures. So down below, you see we actually only eliminated one activity this year. It was an interest-based kind of recreational activity. We had, had eliminated fishing club. We had eliminated ski club. We had eliminated the weight room. We had eliminated other kinds of activities that were recreational. So we did um, eliminate that one um, to kind of go a little bit with the pattern of what we were doing. And so you take that, you add that stipend as well to the, you know, or you subtract it to the overall. And at the bottom, you get what, taking the total expenditures for the stipends, 102,000, and you subtract the option A and the savings from eliminating Frisbee, or option B and the savings from elim eliminating, and you get the bottom number. So either that's your overall cost. I added some of the board accounts in because those weren't all showing when I showed this to the finance committee, so I, so I apologize for that. And that would mean the entire cost then of running your extracurricular program stipends and board accounts would be 65,000 next year or 54,000 if you went with option A or B. And at the, the very bottom note I have for you, there it tells you what it was this year. We spent with the board account $76,000, you know, and $245 on running our activities this year. So we, as that first sheet showed you, we saved 127,000 by what we cut last year, but we spent 76. So it still is we'd be spending less next year because of the revenue we would bring in. So it's just another way to look at um, giving opportunities because we got that feedback loud and clear. We were having a two kind of a, a, a two systems and it didn't seem fair or equitable to the students or the parents that we allowed some people to pay for things that they were passionate about doing and not others. So um, I'm, I'm open to, I'm sorry if it's confusing. I was trying to set up the spreadsheet in a way that would somehow make sense. So how yeah. many are you proposing to bring back? So we're bringing back, um, we have math team being brought back, speech or forensics, and then the spring musical, but not all the stipends related to it and not actually the board account. There was like uh, a hefty board account, which we said they could take 
their, some of their gate receipts or their fundraising to, to build the set and do that. So it was about a $9,000, I think, account that they had had for some things. But they have some money in their activity account that they could um, definitely start out with. So this is on the, um, there was a proposal that, that um, Mr. Baum and Ms. Morelli put together with, with Nick Gale, their department chair, saying, well, we could do it without, we could do it with student choreographers instead of paying for a choreographer, we could do it without the assistant director, we could do it, you know, so they were trying to run a musical that was a little bit more cost effective. So instead of um, costing 30,000 in stipends, you can, and court accounts, you can see the difference there. Does that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Any other questions for Pam? Yeah. What are or, uh, what do we mean by because we said all the accounts are board accounts? What do you mean when you say? You know, there's uh, there were some that, in addition to paying the stipend, the board was funding like their supply and their transportation. So like when you look at um, the math team, the board accounts five hundred. That's to, I think to cover their fees and their bus costs. Yeah, they have entry fees to contests. Um, sometimes they have materials they need to get for contests. And then um, in, in the case of the musical, they have royalties they have to pay for rights to, to the, um, put on the musical. So so would they fundraise to cover those monies? Or how would they cover those? Well, the, you know, one, we talked, but gate receipts and when they sell ads for their programs. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. That would be a way that they can offset those border so, counts. So in the case of the spring musical, or the musical, how much typically were the gate receipts? Did, did they have a sense of? I think it's a 10,000. I'm trying to remember my number. 10 to 15, when we met. Was, like but, yeah. but the board yeah. was Give putting in 20? Was there it was 10 just for 10. supplies, and then we were also paying another 10 in stipend. So, and then uh, we had some assistant ones that we eliminated. Mm -hmm. So it was close to $30,000 it was costing the district to run a musical. But the gate receipts would come back to the board? No. The gate receipts are going back to the okay. The three stipends now add up right. to twelve thousand three forty-one. Right, and plus the musical has a an account with money in it. Mm -hmm. You know, if if they want to buy, uh, what are those rights called? Royalties. The royalties. The royalties to run some kind of play, three or four thousand dollars. They already have the money in a, in an account to do that. Right. So then they would supplement their <coughs> that account with the gate receipts we would have to there's no doubt we're going to have to change what we're used to but the day i mean it's very common that uh, a group of parents and community members get together and help the, the, the kids build their sets and you know when we instead of doing some of those things from a board account and uh, it's very common that when you're when you're uh, doing your playbill that you have advertising or ads that parents can buy to wish their students good luck and or businesses so that all all those Mm -hmm. revenues they can use to help offset their cost and we could finance just the stipends and and we didn't um someone mentioned art club earlier we, we didn't bring that back um i didn't put we didn't put fall play on here that's another performance that that the board might want to consider but you know there are other performing groups on the eliminated if you look back at that original list with my memo there are other things on that list as well these are difficult decisions to make but we were trying to get some performance some drama um, and and try and keep um, a, a lot of opportunities for kids that um, but disproportionately they did take a big hit last year activities and so you know we kind of felt that we could help them raise some revenue but not have to cut a lot more. Can I ask a few questions? Sure. Ben? I don't understand why some of the uh, categories under competitive performance mm -hmm. are in a hundred dollar category and some are in seventy five. If you explain that um, I didn't I missed the understanding if they um, if they go out and compete and and for uh, for instance FCCLA just finished their regional competition we had some uh, second and third place winners they didn't go on to state if they went on to state you saw Patty Farley came okay, presented sorry. to you earlier Basically there's a state level competition and and as Mr. Roscoe talked about you can even get scholarships that, that go into college so these are competitive groups they have entry fees um, they're okay. judged or juried, and so it's and like a team and transportation to get right. there. And so that's um, chess is an IHSA activity. Uh, they have a state meet. I Math got, team I'm sorry, go. I got it now. Does that okay? Yeah. <laughs> the uh, second question I have mm -hmm. is: I mean, don't the twirlers 
they go to the football games and stuff, don't I, they? I'm not, I put them uh, over uh, because I don't believe they enter competitions. Okay, I've not right. yet seen them, they get like on. our Palm Dance Team. Okay. They, they can enter, but I've not yet seen them uh, enter competitions and, and have to travel. And the second question I have is, why are the African American Culture Association Association Institute of Tolerance listed as service and leadership activities? Um, because that's what they, um, for instance, the Association for Student Tolerance is a 100% service organization. That's what they exist for. So they're the ones that go to the, it's not the British home anymore. I know they Scottish renamed home. it. Okay. No, it's the no, British home. They renamed it as something else. Formerly known as the British home. Okay. Um, but they still go there and the residents are the same, even though the name is different. Um, they go there every week. They ring the, um, the bell, uh, Salvation Army bell. They, they do all service work. That's what they exist for. Um, and their name is a little bit of a misnomer, but that's that's what they do. Um, the African American Culture Association is a it's it's a um, student awareness group, but it's also student leadership. So they're working on leadership skills. They they've been doing um, presentations <coughs> in the morning. Um, so yeah, it is it is a way to uh, same with organization of OLAS. I should have written that one out. Uh, organization of Latin American students. So. Um, they do some service, all of those groups, but they have different um, different okay. service things they do within the school. Okay. Um, uh, the next question I yeah. have is uh, I'm sort of on a similar vein there. Last year, you can ask it different way then. <laughs> last year, um, we found out after the fact we eliminated something that eliminated a day of service, which then we talked about and couldn't understand how we eliminated a day of service by eliminating something. Sure. But is that going to be back in with that what is, you're presenting? Um, that would be, I would ask you then to, if you look back on what's eliminated this year on, on this, yeah. that would be the student association assistant okay. um, is removed. So um, we no longer have our student association um, person, uh, Angela Ziola, is on her own running everything. Why we went from three blood drives to two blood drives, we dropped a dance, we dropped Dave's. There's, she was um, key in doing that, and then at that time, John Fields no. took over a lot of the other. So, so no, it wouldn't be brought back. If you want to bring back the And that's how we lost assistant. turnabout, too, that same person we lost the turnabout. Well, you had two Dave's people service. running a huge organization with yeah. all these different activities, and so we had to scale back what we were doing, couldn't ask one person to do what two people well, we, did. We talked about. Yeah. With the service and leadership is then trying to get each sponsor to try to come up with a service activity to try to do more service. Yeah. It wouldn't be the specific day of service. Well, the the only thing that I'd suggest you consider when you make your next proposal, and other people might disagree, but, you know, what would it cost us to implement the fall play again? Mm -hmm. And what would it cost us to implement so there was a, set, a turnabout dance for the kids? And... Again, if there's a if you've changed, gone uh, where you don't like the, the day of service, or again you have to recommend. But if you think, I mean, we took a lot of hits for eliminate day of service, and we did have a lot of kids get involved in that. Well, like so, the, with the play, we did this today. We looked at shenanigans. So what we were trying to do to keep expenses down, and and, and with this pay to participate, try to create somewhat of a cost-neutral proposal to bring opportunities back for kids and um, uh, keep keep the cost down. Shenanigans would be like those kids that want to act but necessarily don't want to be in the musical. Okay. So there's an opportunity. And it was almost the same exact price as the fall play. Okay. But the shenanigans, because it's improv, they don't use set, as, as many sets, and it's, and it's they have two shows, one in the spring, one in the fall. Okay. Or, we felt that it offered the most opportunities to kids to do acting instead of just doing the fall play. You know, we, okay. we were trying to look and say, like, where could everybody that has, in, you know, interest in a performance or something. So that's, like, another thing we're talking about. We're still talking about what the union is, like, mm -hmm. uh, if they did two shows, maybe we only do one show and, and possibly only do half the stipend, but we have to talk with the union on that. But trying to bring as many opportunities back for kids... Um, and, and still keep the cost to a point to where we're, we are still saving some money. Okay, and the, the, the current registration fee is 190 right? Yeah. So the f $10 would be approximately a 5% increase, and $20 would be about 10% increase, right? Yeah. 
Um, and I can just quickly answer the, um, I don't have the most current stipend amount, but it's going to be uh, about $7,000 for the assistant to the student association and the play, the, the director for the fall play is going to be around 5,000. And then there was a board account with that. If the board was, would bring that back, that was 2,700. So the shenanigans so. is a little cheaper yet. It's still out for just acting. Yeah. But if you, if you, so even if you look at the, what mm -hmm. you're telling us on the spring musical, and I think, Mike, is it 11, three or 12, three, but so let's say 12 grand mm -hmm. on stipends. And if you're going to take in, uh, what, 86, three quarters of 86, 6,200 or something, the fall play is now only costing about $6,000. So if you did a similar situation with, excuse me, the spring musical, mm -hmm. if you did something else with the fall play, if, if it's only going to cost $6,000 to do it, it I think it's something that should at least be considered. Sure. Okay, appreciate that. We yeah. can look into that. Tradition, mm -hmm. Traditionally, the fall play is a lot less participants. Right. And well, okay, and I, again, right. I, mm -hmm. I don't, my kids didn't have it, so I'm not sure how it goes, but just something to consider. I have, right. you know, it's 15 to 20 kids, you if, know. If I'm not mistaken, the reason that they kept kids. shenanigans this year was to give all those students opportunities to act. And that was kind of the bigger... Okay. More po seem to be a little more popular, and there's improv and Good freedom draw. to. Mm -hmm. Good draw. Yeah. So that's why we felt instead of the fall play, we would do the shenanigans. That's fine. Any other questions like for Pam? Like yeah, I got oh. some questions. Yes, John. I don't want to cut off Laura. Oh, go ahead, John. Um, I'm under category. I didn't quite follow the H G H A and all that stuff. What is that? This the stipend level. Pay, pay grade. The pay grade. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how can there be under volunteer activities that pay, why is there a pay grade then? We, we don't understand, if I'm not mistaken, those are in the volunteer <coughs> activities, but they have never received a stipend, but yeah, they're classified I, under that H and G. Isn't yeah, it, isn't I, it that sure. uh, I, when they first start a club, it goes to volunteer status and then will eventually evolve into a stipend? Has to be approved yeah, but I, it's yeah. never been a it's gone for a stipend. I just I just transferred it from a from a list that had been given to me, but I I, I don't know how they are placed. But those are our categories within the uh, collective bargaining agreement. So, okay. uh, I could I could pull up the the document and see if they're actually listed in there. But those were assigned, so I didn't drop them, even though there was no pay associated with them. It was listed in a document from HR. So. What do you want to see? If it's listed under H or G? Yeah, if, if it's actually written down there as we that category, but no time. pay has ever been given for those. Yeah, we could check that next time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, under yeah. G, see, anything I don't see anything yeah, called okay. any club. Yeah. Or, or, or not under H. I don't, I don't see yeah. anything called. So I'll drop those. Those shouldn't be on life. Those shouldn't be on there then. And I don't see anything called okay. any club under H. Okay. I'll remove those. Okay, John. The, uh, this goes back to Tim's point. Why did you ever consider changing that name Associated Students for Tolerance to reflect what they're doing? Because to me it, it it's a it's a loaded uh, it's loaded. Yeah, they actually go by AST all the time and, and I was I, I, I actually asked them about when it started. It actually did start about um, as a group out of the social science department and it was um, actually started I think because of women's issues when it originally women's rights and women's issues but it quickly changed to intergenerational and and just you know acceptance and respect kind of thing and then working together toward common goals and then they started the work with a, so it evolved quite quickly into the service club and i i have asked that i, I will I'll, i can broach that most definitely with the group again they 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 normally just call themselves ast and and I wrote it out because otherwise do, people do, don't know do what they it stands have a, for. A similar mission to the Gay Lesbian Alliance um, club actually, or whatever that actually is. Actually, they uh, just they, they they want to help all people. It's a kind of service oh. to mankind. It would be what the club oh. might be called in other schools. But so it is definitely a misnomer, mm -hmm. Dr. Keene. So, um, but it's they the name. So that's a historical name for what a hundred years ago, or no? I think it's. <laughs> It wasn't that 100 years Seven ago. Years ago. I don't know how long they've been in oh, existence, yeah, but certainly before I came. Shouldn't we okay, so shouldn't we give the kids 
the right to name the yeah. village as a No, I'm, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of the taxpayer looking at this list mm -hmm. uh, and what we're doing, and that's why I'm bringing up these other questions. Mm -hmm. um, like this whole African American Cultural Association. What's the mission? Why don't we have a Mexican American Cultural Association, mm -hmm. Chinese American Cultural Association? So I want you to defend mm -hmm. that. Well, I mean, if a group of students came together and wanted to have that, I think your your um, Latino, your organization of Latin American students is, is is would answer your first question. But it's students coming together that have an interest in starting a oh, club. Could, yeah. yeah, organization of Latin American students. So, right, but the the difference yeah. is having an organization and the taxpayers paying for it. Yeah. Can, can you defend that? Um, yeah. Well, I, mean, well, I, I want I you to. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I believe that these, these are groups of students that have been uh, perhaps historically underrepresented in schools and haven't felt that they had a place or a voice, and they've come together to um, exhibit cultural and ethnic identity and pride, and um, these, the existence of these clubs have helped these students become more active and more engaged in the school community, and you know, research would show engagement does translate into school, student success so in a lot of schools these clubs have helped students find a place where they feel comfortable and they feel welcome and um, have met with great success and have learned to contribute and be active members and citizens um, within the within the school so as far as like the pillar of, of respect and the pillar of citizenship these would be ways that students would would find a place um, that maybe have been disenfranchised in the past so you know I'd like you to like if you don't mind uh, I'd like some research on that I mean that's asserted a lot mm -hmm. but just going to like the college level they've done studies of like these individual houses for the, all these ethnic groups and it actually mm -hmm. people argue that it's harmful to isolate people in these groups I'm not making a judgment now on this but I think for the taxpayers of this community uh, and some of those notes we have, people want to know why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And it's got to be more than I feel this way or whatever. We should have some data on it. Mm -hmm. That also brings me to this, the RBGSA. A lot of people would disagree with us funding the 1772 as a stipend for this organization. Because it, you can make arguments pro and con well, about Jan, it. Well, Jan, I think it was brought up before uh, last Matt, year when this uh, club Matt, was out. me off. But what I'm saying though is, as a community, the community elects the board, and this was brought up last year when we were talking about clubs and that stuff like that, and it was voted by a, ma a super majority of the board that they wanted to keep the, they have this club uh, out there. Matt, this is a discussion. Okay. Okay, and people are listening, people have a right. I want a rationale for why we're doing this. I know we voted for it, and I'll probably make everyone vote for it again. But I want to know, you know, you, you don't have a right to basically stifle a discussion on this issue because this is an uh people could argue that we have no business doing this i can i say so yes. my whole point is i want a rationale on this it's a politically correct or what what's it doing in the high school can i uh edit my question from before because you actually answered the question this time and not last time some of these groups are cultural groups you said that, mm -hmm. and I don't have a problem with that, but I'm questioning why we don't have another category and call them cultural and have them pay a fee like a lot of the other ones. The service, I mean, the only reason we put the cultural under service and leadership is because they're developing leadership, whether it's for their culture or whether it's developing leadership to um, bring their culture into the school and to make it a multicultural setting for the students. And I think uh, that's, I mean, that's also showing kind of leadership skills to, to, to speak on behalf of your culture, your background, uh, or your beliefs. That part's all good. I'm just saying, if you look at the other groups in there, it's the classes, <coughs> it's the student association, ecology club, maybe somebody could argue that one, best buddies, they're helping the other students here, National Honor Society, that's an educational, uh, you know, all of them, don't, you know, some of these other ones probably do some good things too for the communities I'm gonna guess but mm -hmm. uh, all I'm saying is the thought is if we're going to require a lot of the activities to be funding should we 
differentiate in that group. Just to, and, and again, whether we do or we don't, I think we should call the cultural service and leadership if that's really what you're included in that okay. category. And yeah, that's different than that's different than John's point. I, I realize that. Right, but but you're making a good point. I agree with you totally. That that should be separated out. And there's another issue here. And this is why we are sponsoring the RB Gay and Student Association. Whatever they do, I don't know what they do. We're not funding the Bulldogs for life. Mm -hmm. I want you to give me a rationale for that. Um, well, I, I certainly could, and Dr. Skinkus, you can join in at any time you want to. Um, the Office of Civil Rights, <laughs> yeah. the Office of Civil Rights, has made it um, very clear that s schools need to protect um, students who have been um, bullied, ostracized, and picked on, and they've been very clear that we do need to um, have a place where our students feel safe and protected, and that would be our gay, lesbian, and transgendered students. And so we have very clear directives on that, should the students want to have a group, that we support those groups. And so that would be the same in other schools as well. I think the thing is, is though, but, but, but we're we, have, we have a collective bargaining agreement, though, that doesn't allow. So, I mean, it's, it's not, we have a group, but we can't request that someone volunteer to, so we, we have a contract that, is in place that when a, they have a process that goes where how a, st a stipend is developed, John. So having that group to support those kids and support those of what she just mentioned of their civil rights, the way the contract is is that as those groups had a, a sponsor at, after, a, a, uh, I think it's a two-year trial period, John, or is sure. it one, then they have the right to be paid for sponsoring and supervising those students outside the educational day. Well, at least they submit, I apologize, sir, they submit to the board for that. And that was superintendent principal. I, I, don't, I don't understand your explanation, uh, Kevin. I mean, the Student Athletic Trainers Association, my daughter in graduate school was in that group. Right, those have traditionally been volunteer groups, but he's asking why we were paying for the RBGSA. As, as, that, as that club developed and that stayed around and someone sponsored that, at, under collective bargaining after the two year grace period, then they have a right to petition for a stipend, it was awarded a stipend. So that's why we have that stipend. I mean, that's how all of these clubs eventually got to have stipends. Same with the College Club, Association for Student Tolerance, OLA. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any, any other questions for Pam? Yeah, I have a, I was looking at the cost per participant, and except for the newspapers, um, the average cost coming in from like somewhere around 100 to 150. You're choosing to bring back speech, and that cost per participant is somewhere around $400 per participant. Why are you choosing to bring back speech? Again, it is an IHSA, um, you know, sanctioned event that allows our students to compete all the way up to the state level, and you know that's something that. Um, we had been inconsistent with last year and that we allowed some of those things to continue and not others and so since it is a you know that was that was the reasoning there um, we had been growing our speech team however it, and they were meeting with a great deal of success and so it's kind of uh, it ebbs and flows over time but we were uh, as we had more and more success the group grew so um, those numbers change over time. But and, the, and the board funding is for transportation? Is that the yes, for? for their competitions. Okay. And, and so we would and charge 100 instead of right. 75. I'd like to, before we... I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, you had mentioned that the student association assistant helped with turnabout? And my I'm not sure about that. that. Pam would be able to tell you what the assistant did. And my Jane? understanding Pam is that they they pay tickets for that. So wouldn't the ticket price for turnabout Cover it. off offset that stipend? No. Oh, it pays for the <laughs> I could speak with Pam and the president. Sure. The uh, tickets, uh, first off, the any student that purchased an activity fee, then those students would not be paying uh, for that. And so I don't have the numbers from that. That would be. Uh, and that's just decorations and DJ and some of that stuff. So, in which he said the assistant was close to seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. You know, I, I need to. I think we need to. Mm -hmm. Dr. Keene, you brought up uh, some, some points that obviously you have some concerns with, but I think this is one of those things I need to ask the board for a priority. Um, is it a, is it is it the pleasure of the board that 
we have Pam give back some information on the effect of cultural groups, uh, you know, their impact on high schools, whether that's positive or negative, as much as I can appreciate that study. I, I want to make sure that in the time when we're deciding on whether we're cutting extracurriculars, doing budgets, doing finances, and scheduling, if the board is so, you know, so chooses for us to do that, I'll work with Pam and we will bring you back information on how many schools offer those things. Um, but I, I don't want to get into whether or not we should support it or not support it and have her write a, a second thesis on the positive or negative impact. I can tell you for this year it's not going to impact my vote one way or the other if I get a study back. And I'm going forward, I don't know, but this year it's not going to impact my vote. So I, I, what I, I what to Tim said, I think separating this thing out is a good idea, just having it on the okay. sheet as a separate thing. And it's a uh, cultural. Yeah, this should be a cultural thing, and, and maybe I'll bring up a motion as a, as a group, and we can vote on this, okay. yes or no, okay. as a cultural thing. Okay. But put all those things together, because they are separate from this other stuff. Well, I would ask one thing, though. I mean, not that I want to do extra research, but we went through a lot of effort to compare ourselves to justification for cutting a couple of sports out to the league and everything like that. Pam, and I'm... No, you have a lot to do. Do we have that kind of information? I mean, do we know? Oh, I'm sorry, do we know if the schools in our conference or the schools that we compare ourselves size-wise have the some kind of clubs we do or not? I mean, John meets with the other activities directors, so he probably no. I don't want, find again. I'm not easily. Kevin. I'm what not we can do is yeah. gather it. We can try to put together a yeah. general idea of because sure. it's not going to affect me. My concern is being if they're cultural, say they're cultural, and if they're cultural, should we charge a fee? I mean, should we charge the math club kids a fee and not the, uh, you know, ecology or the African American clubs a fee? That that that's what my thing is. I mean, I, here's I don't my only my only thing. thought on that is, in that general registration fee we're offering some of these clubs, right? And a student can come in and show up to a student association meeting, and not show up to a student association. Right. So, if if, if I'm an African-American student and I attend RB for the first time, um, do I have to pay to associate with other African-American students and help that's, that's a good point. educate the school culture on African-American Afri culture or on the Latino culture? Because um, that's, that's why, I, I, I mean, I proposed a question to Pam about possibly combining all of our cultural and tolerance groups to where we just had one. Mm -hmm. Uh, to, to try to manage those stipends, um, but some of those things are unique to their culture and to their own identity. And that's why I have them under service and leadership because uh, although our, our population has continued to grow, those student populations are still uh, minorities at Riverside Brookfield High School. And I think it does take some personal leadership to step up and, and help educate the rest of the school on your culture and, and your, your choices. So. I mean, if the board chooses, if, it, if it's where it's listed on this chart is, is an issue for the board, we can look at that. But I, I think those groups still do service. They do community service things. They do do leadership things. Um, can I make a comment? The NIH, the National Institution of Health, and this is what my pre-dissertation research was on, um, recognizes four groups. Underrepresent, and they call them underrepresented minorities. It's African Americans. Hispanics. Um, there was the other groups of Hispanics. Is a uh, white Hispanic or Hawaii? No, not, not born here. From other um, like Mexican American. All right. And then I think like Hawaiian. And I can't remember the fourth one right now. And there's a plethora of research that shows a certain acculturation component has a lot to do with socioeconomic factors and an acculturation component or students that come from what we call maybe uh, a working class or a cultural background, they don't have exposure to generations of family with college degrees, they don't have the journal articles laying around, they don't have the educational experiences. So some of these kind of activities and groups help bring national parity in the, pres in the professions. So if that helps any, you know, and I probably do have some articles still around. So does the board itself want to have Pam do this uh, 
analysis of uh, the effect of culture. Of what? The effects of a culture groups in the schools. I, I think, I'm with Gary. I think we need to do something more going forward. Mm -hmm. One would be to bring forward what is our policy on this. And I'm looking at the policy book, and the policy book talks about, uh, you know, 6 colon 190 extracurricular and co-curricular activities. And they, they have some things where they list certain requirements and things like that. And the second thing is all of these items currently are, are I didn't find everyone, but they're all listed in a stipend schedule in the current contract. So, you know, we are about, you know, 15 months or whatever it is before this contract expires. We ought to start looking down the road as to what we're going to write into the next contract, not necessarily what we're going to write into the next year's budget. Although the two, the last two speakers are going to give us this board an actual say in what the what the school year is going to look like next year. But after that, after the constraints that we're under in the contract and the constraints we're under um, in the policy, what do we want to go after that year looking forward? And and do we want to realign the clubs for these kind of reasons and merge them or whatever. I mean, that's something that going forward, you pick up the old contract and it's listed there, you know, German club, French club, you know, all these clubs are listed there, some of which we decided not to fund or not. And maybe there'd be a better model to combine some of the cultural type things or some of the leadership type things or redefine them as a board going forward. Mm -hmm. So I think right now, we're going into a few meetings where we really need to have the discussions on what we're going to do next year, not only for our certified staff, but our, our non-certified staff, and, 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 and what our bottom line is going to be for providing opportunities for the kids, both in the classroom and, and, and after the school, whether it be on the athletic fields or some of these other activities. And, and, and I would not want really the administration doing anything more than that core activity of, of moving us forward into this next year. You know, last year we did the budget. We, we ended up doing all this budget work in August and stuff. And, 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 and that's what I think we really need to focus on these next few meetings. Uh, they brought us, they brought us a proposal, a first read for both the, the sports and the activities. And I think we need to reflect upon that in, in the next meeting, you know, whether it be the next committee of the whole or the next regular, whenever we're going to talk about this, decide what we're going to do for this next year so that on June 30th, 2013, we're going to move into the next contract and, and move into the next phase of, of what we're going to write into, what our activities are going to be and how much we're going to fund them. Sure. And so those, so those questions, John, will come out in that, in that discussion. We should be looking forward to you know, the language in the contract, everyone says are certain, certain pieces of language we need to clean up. We need to start focusing in on that. And, and the policy, maybe we'll look at what the policy says and if it's correct as to how these groups are being uh, combined or, 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 you know, it says here, the district has sufficient financial resources for the activity, you know, or it's from the request of the students and if students are out there requesting it I think the board then should you know c consider what the superintendent's recommendation is at that point you, I mean you can't I couldn't have said it better it's a great speech and um, I just uh, you know looking at it from the perspective of people paying for the school that they can focus on certain things they think don't belong and we don't need that kind of negative uh, feeling. That's why I just, if we can look at it in the future and do our policy, that's great. But I think for now, if we just separate it out, I'd be happy with that. Okay. And I just might want to add that we, you know, student voice is important. And I think our students could very clearly articulate to you what these clubs have done for them personally and what they've done for, for the school community and the broader community. And I would be happy to, you know, present some 
some information to you on that as well if you want that at a later time uh, as you move forward in the future to look at those um, activities in more depth. All right, any other questions for Pam? 